Senator Gaines. File item 21, SB 1239. Passed on file. File item 22, SB 1282. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1282 by Senator Leno, an act relating to pesticides. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I want to begin my introduction to this bill with uh, sharing a little bit of information I've learned about neonicotinoids, otherwise known as neonics. Neonics were established about 20 years ago. They're a class of neuroactive insecticides chemically similar to nicotine. So developed late 90s, one type of them, then a second type. Now there are seven types on the market. In the same time period, beekeepers have reported losing, on average, 30% of their hives in every year. Last year, for example, 44% of bee colonies were lost nationwide. UC Davis researchers have noted that wild bee populations have declined 23% between 2008 and 2013. That, of course, raises the question, is this correlation or causation? So bee populations have been in decline for many reasons. They're impacted by stress and habitat loss, pests and pathogens. But with that said, there are literally thousands of studies from the past two decades that suggest that the introduction of these new powerful neuroactive insecticides are pushing bees over the edge. As a result of that, some of the largest players in the home gardening market, Scott's and Ortho, have actually pulled all of their neonic products from retailer shelves. They are no longer available. And in fact, the general manager of Ortho said the following, while agencies in the United States are still evaluating the overall impact of neonics, on pollinator populations, it's time for ortho to move on. We encourage other companies and brands in the consumer pest control category to follow our lead. Many have, but unfortunately, there's still a few players in the marketplace who think that they can profit by ortho and Scott's withdrawal from the marketplace. So there is still a problem. And I don't think I need to share with all of you the importance of bees not only to our ecosystem, but also to our economic system. They have a $19 billion impact on it, and if we were to lose our bee colonies or see a further decline, our agricultural industry would follow as well. So there are two components to this bill, neither of which will impact the use of neonics in the agricultural industry, and I just want to repeat that neither of which in any way will impact the use of neonics in the agricultural industry. So the first part of the bill will simply retail, limit the use in retail sales by eliminating the misuse or overuse of these dangerous pesticides. They're only to be used certain times of years and they're only to be used in certain quantities Unfortunately, all consumers don't read the labels that carefully, and they are being misused. So that's point one. Point two is that they would require neonic-treated plants and seeds to be labeled as such so that consumers can know, even though some products are labeled bee-friendly, over 50% of those that were sold with that indication, in fact, had enough of this pesticide in them to outright kill bees. So just to label. But again, recognizing the very serious concern of citrusilid in the citrus industry, and this is a, a delicate balancing act here, how do we address the safety, the need to protect the bee population at the same time recognizing a threat to our citrus industry? So with or without this bill, there is a threat to the citrus industry, and we need to do more to address that. In budget conversations right now, we're looking at a proposal of the governor. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $27 million. He's proposed to address this and some other risk to our agricultural industry. 
There is a legislative proposal to add even more to the budget for that. That's all a work in progress right now. I don't want to confuse the issues, but there is a need for state support for our citrus industry. But again, this bill will not impact, will not touch the use of neonics for agricultural use one bit. So I think we can do both. We can thoughtfully look at how we need to address the threat of citrusilid in our, in our uh, citrus industry, and at the same time, the very real threat to our bee colony population and their decline as we speak, and what it would do to our overall agricultural industry if we don't take some action. I ask for your I vote. Senator Nielsen. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I do urge an, a no vote. The agricultural industry of California vigorously opposes this legislation. The citrus portion of this industry vigorously opposes this. The beekeepers of California vigorously oppose this legislation. A few years ago, the Department of Agriculture and the EPA convened a working group to talk about the impacts on bees. In a report from 2013, they, they concluded, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, that effects on bees don't occur under normal circumstances. The risk to bee populations from these neonicotinoids, as they are currently used, is low, low. There are many factors that affect our bee populations. And nobody cares more about preserving those populations than the agricultural industry and the beekeepers. This goes way beyond. One of the most egregious aspects of this, it takes the regulation from the Cal EPA sections and gives it under the Business and Professions Code and allows standing for litigation to thousands of other independent individuals. Can you simply imagine the opportunities for litigation that will paralyze the agricultural industry and the beekeepers? And that is fully intended. That's probably the most significant provision here that will not be talked about. There is no crisis here. Oh, there's a crisis. That's the crisis to the agricultural industry. If you want to paralyze agriculture, vote yes. Vote yes. This is not needed. And there are continuing exhaustive studies on the bee populations of California. Think of what happens in the years when we've had floods. And I've watched them, the hives are flooded. Now, we haven't had that in a few years, but there are many, many circumstances that affect our bee populations, and there is no crisis. This bill is trying to conjure up a crisis, but it does way overreact, most importantly from the standpoint of this issue of the litigation. I remind you, Listen to what the United States Department of Agriculture has opined and the EPA has opined. Lo, there is no need for this legislature to act or respond and to do something as drastic as this bill attempts to do. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, for the good of our agricultural industry, for your ability to have adequate low-cost supplies of food and to preserve our bee populations, I urge a no vote. Senator Allen. You know, with all respect, uh, I, I think a couple things need to be addressed. Uh, first of all, there is a very clear decline in bee populations, and it, we can provide you with, with ample evidence if, if you'd like that to be provided. The other thing to mention is that this is this does two key things. It's labeling, and it's and, and it and it it 
it, and it does not impact agricultural application of neonicotinoids at all, at all. Uh, you know, the, the, the farmers will be able to apply the neonicotinoids to their crops if they want to. Um, we know that neonicotinoids are having a negative impact on bees and other pollinators. Uh, the extent of the impact, and this is what led the European Union to call for an out-and-out -out moratorium that they've imposed on neonicotinoids in Europe. And the extent of the impacts and exactly how and when these pesticides can be safely used is the subject of the Department of Pesticide Regulation's ongoing reevaluation. However, that study will not include residential use of these pesticides, which is what this bill addresses. This does not affect agricultural application of the neonicotinoids. The measures proposed in this bill are an appropriate interim step to take while we wait for more robust mitigation policies following the conclusion of the reevaluation. But as I say, nothing in this bill prohibits CDFA, farmers, or professional pesticide applicators from continuing to use these pesticides, especially in the ongoing effort to combat Asian citrus psyllid, which we've heard about on the floor twice already this week. Also, nothing in this bill requires a farmer to hire someone to apply these pesticides. This bill is fo focused entirely on consumers uh, who are not agricultural players. So the idea is the consumers deserve the right to know if a plant has been treated with these pesticides, especially those who are creating bee and butterfly gardens. And given the toxic nature of these pesticides and their potential to impact pollinators, it's critical to limit their sales to commercial applicators who know when and how they can safely be applied to limit those negative impacts. If homeowners with backyard citrus trees wish to have their trees treated for the citrus psyllid, they still can. If psyllid's found on a tree, CDFA will come in and treat the tree. Or the homeowner can call their local pest guy who's trained in dealing with these pesticides if they're in a quarantine zone and wish to have the, uh, take precautions against the psyllid. But ultimately, this bill is a balanced approach to protect pollinator health while still ensuring farmers and others have access to a full array of tools to combat the citrus psyllid. And so I respectfully disagree with a number of the assertions that were made from my friend from Tehama and, and respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Senator Vidak. Madam President, members, I know this bill has very, very good intentions. Everyone loves bees. I've got pictures of bees in my office. I've got bees flying around in my orchard. I have to rent bees. I have to lease bees. I could not have a crop without bees. I happened, yes, I rent them. And I give them back after I pay for them. Bees keep this world running. We all heard about birds and the bees. Okay? That's different, that's right. But this, this, this good intention here is, is actually going to really hurt the ag industry. And, and when you say the ag industry uh, is not going to be affected, then why is every ag group opposed to this bill? Because there's actually more citrus trees in Southern California than in our $3 billion citrus industry in Southern and Central California. And this takes one of the tools out of our toolbox to safely take care of these trees. We see Texas, we see Florida, we see, talk about uh, southern, the Southern Hemisphere, where their citrus industry has just absolutely been decimated. We can learn from those mistakes by, take, by, by taking one of our best tools away, one that even on the label says may harm bees, I use these myself. We do not harm bees, okay? Bees are very important to us. The State Beekeepers Association is against this bill. This is not going to be good for anybody. And if this passes and does get signed, we will be very, very sad when our industry is decimated. I urge a no vote. Senator Barry Hill. Thank you, Madam President, <clears throat> members. I rise in uh, opposition to this bill. Um, first of all, I would like to agree with uh, the senator from Fresno. I think he had some very good points. I also believe that this will have a direct impact on the farming industry, uh, an industry that's very survival depends on bees being healthy. I also think that there is uh, little doubt that the author has good intentions here. 
a good intention to address the declining bee population, but I think this bill is a whole bunch premature. The bill would needlessly disrupt a multi-year regulatory review already underway on this same subject. Research in Europe and by the federal government have determined the other that other factors play a far bigger role in the declining bee population than the use of this one chemical. In fact, a multi-year study by the EPA, University of Maryland, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture confirmed the results of previous studies which showed that use of the chemical has a negligible effect on honey bee health. To ban non-commercial use of something so valuable to agriculture without 100% certainty is just bad policy. Those of us that are farmers or are from farming communities understand all too well the importance of a healthy bee population. It is in our best interest to see the problem eradicated, yet agriculture is universally opposed to this legislation. I urge a no, a no vote. Senator Galgiani. Um, I must rise in opposition to the bill. Um, I can appreciate what the author is trying to do, and I know that he is trying to get this right, and I hope that if this bill gets out today that we can continue talking. Um, I know that you're well-intentioned in taking care of the bee population, and I share that concern with you, and it, this is a very difficult issue at best to balance. Um, my concern arises from the fact that we um, have the potential for a real epidemic here in California with the Asian citrus psyllid, the, the zombie type bug that has devastated the whole citrus industry in Florida. Uh, comments have been made that this won't impact the ag industry. It does not impact the farmers and what they do to their citrus groves, but the problem has originated from backyard citrus trees. We have more citrus trees in California in backyards than we do in citrus groves. The quarantines that we have in place in the state right now, they're mostly in the areas where the bug was detected in backyards, not in citrus groves. This zombie type bug can travel four miles in one day. And so if it's detected in your neighbor's yard, if we're lucky that it's detected, it can be four miles away within the same exact day. And what this bug eats, it infects and it kills. You can't call somebody and have them come treat the tree. You can't take any kind of uh, anything that you can buy over the counter and just treat the tree and cure it of its illness like you can roses or other plants that we're used to. This bug kills the tree. And in Florida, within just two years, because they didn't get ahead of it, they lost three quarters of their citrus industry. And again, the problem started in backyard trees where they're not managed well. It cost us, it was $7.8 billion hit to the industry, and what's been found now is that farmers have had to completely abandon their citrus groves because they can't get ahead of it, they can't get control of it because the infestation, the infection is so bad, they've lost money and they have no choice but to walk away like people walk away from their homes with foreclosures. They cannot, they can't stop the hemorrhaging from the problem. This has the impact, the potential to completely devastate this industry, and that is why I'm so worried about it. Um, CDFA is spending a lot of money now, several million dollars. It's in, the majority of the money is being spent to do the trapping in residential backyards for this. So I would request that you stay off of this bill or vote no on it today. If it does get out, I hope the author will continue to work with us. I know it's, uh, you're well-intentioned and it's a difficult balance, but this has the potential to completely decimate the citrus industry in the state of California. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Senator Leno, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam President. Clearly an important and emotional issue, and I am 100% respectful of concerns, but it's important to clear the air of misinformation and what's accurate and what's not. First of all, if you're going to deny that there's any threat to the bee population, then I really don't know that I can engage in a conversation with you because that's just putting your head in the ground and ignoring a very serious problem. 
So moving beyond that, yes, Florida was seriously struck. We are ahead of the curve further than Florida was. But again, with or without this bill, citrusillid is something we need to deal with. And with or without this bill, that which is being done now is not sufficient. And there is still a threat to the agricultural industry within citrus. Now, with regard to backyard trees, if you are in a quarantine area, all you have to do is call CDFA and they come out and treat your tree. State pays for it. If your tree is already so far gone, by the time you were quarantined, they will remove the tree for you. So we already have that in place. But again, let's refocus on what this bill does and how is it such a serious threat? Again, there's no doubt to the serious risk by these pesticides known as neonics to our ecosystem. Proof, I think, no more is needed than the likes of Scott's and Ortho pulling all of their neonic treated products from the shelves. When do we see that done by industry? When they recognize they're willing to risk some market share because they know the risk of the misuse, not the proper use, the misuse of these powerful chemicals. And so all we're doing is labeling a product and with regard to rampant lawsuits that are gonna devastate the agricultural industry, a bit of an exaggeration. All we have done, because that's what we do when we have labels on products, is put it in business and professions code because that is where you would go if a product that's by law supposed to be labeled is not. Nothing unusual about this bill. So again, we just want consumers to know with a simple label that says the state of California says this may be a risk to bees. Consumer beware. And then limiting the sale to those who are not in the commercial side of the industry. And again, I will be fighting, separate, industry, separate issue aside, I will be fighting for more funding to deal with this because it is a state responsibility to come to the protection, not later to the rescue, but to the protection of the citrus industry in California. But this bill is very limited, is very thoughtful, I ask for your I vote. Please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? No. no. Bates? Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? No. no. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Yes. No. De Leon? Fuller? Aye. No. Gaines? No. Galgiani? No. Glazer? No. Hall? Aye. Aye. Hancock? Aye. Hernandez? Hertzberg? Hill? Aye. Wayso? Huff? No. Jackson? Lada? Leno? Aye. Leva? Aye. Lou? McGuire? Mendoza? Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Morlock? No. Morell? No. Wynn? No, Nielsen? No, Pan? Pavley? Aye, Roth? No, Runner? Stone? Vidak? No, Wykowski? Aye, Wolk? Call the absent members one time, please. Bates? De Leon? Hernandez? Hertzberg? Weso, Jackson, Lada, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Pan, Runner, Stone, Stone, No, Wolk. Aye. 
Ayes 12, noes 15. Senator Leno moves the call. Leno moves the call. I said it twice. File item 23. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1363 by Senator Monning, an act relating to coastal resources. Thank you, uh, Madam President and members. SB 1363 requires the Ocean Protection Council, in coordination with the State Coastal Conservancy, to establish and administer the Ocean Acidification and Hypoxia Reduction Program. This bill follows recent recommendations in a report released by the West Coast Ocean Acidification and Hypoxia Science Panel and Ocean Science Trust that talks about the benefits oceans have for carbon sequestration and specifically conducting further scientific research regarding the benefits of eel grass restoration. Members, I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Discussion or debate, Senator Stone. Thank you, um, Madam Chairwoman. We have many significant problems in the state of California, Our economy, trying to get our job base uh, increased, our, our water supply issues, public safety issues. But this is a issue where we're creating a problem to create a solution. Uh, the whole science of ocean acidification is hardly a settled science and is, I think, grossly mischaracterized. It is unworthy of yet another new program to which spend precious state resources and ultimately create more state bureaucracy and require unfunded mandates on businesses and even residential users as we deal with the effluent and attempt to alkalinize water that goes into our oceans. In fact, the leading proponent of this theory, Dr. Richard A. Fee, who testified in Congress in 2010 and made the claim that the data shows a decline in seawater pH appeared to coincide with atmospheric carbon dioxide was later shown to be fraudulent it was fraudulent. To reach his conclusion, Dr. Fee only looked at data from 1988 to the present, when in fact we've been monitoring ocean pH for over 100 years. And you, you may ask, how much has the pH of the ocean decreased? It's decreased by about four-tenths of a point, if you look at the, at the scale of pH from zero to 14. You could hardly uh, say that that is due to effluent coming from certainly the state of California and possibly the world. But even if it was, a phenomenon that uh, was created by man. What impact would the state of California have in affecting a pH of 0.4 points on the pH scale by treating our effluent going out into the ocean without significant burdens, ultimately, on business as this proceeds through the uh, bureaucratic process in the years to come? I think we should wait until we have bona fide science that shows that there truly is a problem with ocean acidification that can be 100% attributable to man and not through climactic changes that are not have a nexus to man-made issues. So let's not create another bureaucracy. Let's not put another nail in the coffin for California businesses that many of whom use water, potable and unpotable, to manufacture right, and, and to thrive. And this could have a devastating effect ultimately on our economy in the state of California. Let's focus on the issues that really matter to the citizens at home throughout the entire state of uh, 38 wonderful million people, and uh, let's not create problems so we can find solutions. I respectively ask for a no vote. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Senator, would you like to close? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a couple of comments in closing. Uh, appreciate the comments of my colleague from Riverside. However, um, not sure if if he's had an opportunity, I would direct him to the study conducted um, uh, by the Ocean Protection Council with a panel of expert scientists. We have support on this bill from constituents in my district who are impacted by current ocean acidification. And we do know that eelgrass has proven to be a carbon sequester. Uh, the oyster industry, which is uh, big in my district and also my colleague from Northern California uh, is behind this bill. There are steps we can take, members. This bill 
moves us forward to take a further look at that to see how we can protect and restore eelgrass as a mechanism to reduce acidification and hypoxia. I would suggest that those who don't think this is important um, uh, align themselves far too often with those who also don't believe that climate change is a real issue or an impact on our planet. There's much we can look to. 99% of science uh, recognizes climate change as a serious threat to our planet uh, and that carbon sequestration is one of the remedies to that. Members, I urge your aye vote. Thank you. Please call the roll. Allen? Aye. aye. Anderson? No. no. Bates? Bell? Aye. aye. Berryhill? No. Block? Aye. aye. Canella? Aye. aye. De Leon? Fuller? No. Gaines? No. Galgiani? Aye. aye. Glazer? Aye. aye. Hall? Aye. Hancock? Aye. aye. Hernandez? Aye. aye. Hertzberg? Aye. aye. Hill? Aye. Hueso? Huff? No. Jackson? Aye. Lada? Leno? Aye. Leva? Aye. aye. Lou? Aye. McGuire? Aye. aye. Mendoza? Aye. aye. Mitchell? Aye. aye. Monning? Aye. aye. Morlock? Aye. No. Morrell? No. Wynn? No. Nielsen? No. Pan? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Roth? Aye. Runner? Stone? No. Vidak? No. Wykowski? Aye. Wolk? Aye. Call absent members once, please. Bates? De Leon? Wessel? Aye. Lada? Aye. Runner? Ayes 26, noes 11, the measure passes. File item 24, Mr. Secretary, please read.